Welcome to Category 5 Technology TV. This is episode number 532, and this week we are going to be looking at how to improve the audio of your podcast, your YouTube channel, your videos, family movies, anything that contains audio. We're going to run it through a tool that is going to enhance it, make all the levels beautiful so that one person is not louder than the other, and so on and so forth. It's an amazing tool for broadcasters, podcasters. You want to stick around. We're going to be showing you how to do that, but we're going to take it one step further. This tool is only meant to run on Mac and Windows. Mm -hmm. We are going to show you how to make it work on Linux. It's like a double feature. Yes. Don't want to miss it. Don't want to miss it. Stick around. <laughs> Here's what's coming up in the Category 5.TV newsroom. A hard drive has been stolen from an exclusive club containing the personal details of members such as Stephen Fry and Lord Reese. The U.S. government is funding mind control chip research getting a drone for Christmas. If you're in the UK, you may have to consider new legislation coming this spring. Uber's driver and customer data has been compromised and they've paid hackers to try and cover it up. And Skype has been removed from app stores in China. Stick around. The full details are coming up later in the show. This is Category 5 Technology TV. Trusted only to solid state drives by Kingston Technology. Revive your computer with improved performance and reliability over traditional hard drives with Kingston SSDs. Category 5 TV streams live with Telestream Wirecast and Nimble Streamer. Tune in every week on Roku, Kodi, Plex, and other HLS video players. For local showtimes, visit Category5.tv. Category5.tv is a member of the Tech Podcast Network. If it's tech, it's here. Cat5.tv slash TPN and the International Association of Internet Broadcasters. Cat5.tv slash IAIB. I like how you turn it into a rap. It's like Cat5. <laughs> it's my stutter. It's the stutter. <laughs> it's the stutter. That's okay. Hey, how are you? How you been? How's your week been? I hope it's been fantabulous. Is that how a you word? Guys been? Yeah. I just said it, so it's got to be a word. All right, then. We'll that's take how it. it works over here. Like, when we say something, that's just how that's it's the Cat 5 Dictionary. We just add it to the dictionary. <laughs> yeah. My week's been good. I'm on vacation. Yeah. No complaints. That's nice. Yeah. I was nice hanging out with a friend in the States last week, just yeah. uh, enjoying some American Whereabouts? things. Uh, West Virginia. Okay. Enjoying some American things. Viewers in West Virginia, can I get a whoop whoop? Whoop whoop. In the comments below. Yeah. <laughs> so it was good. I, it, the one thing that I, like, I just can't wrap my head around is the crazy deals for the Black Friday. Oh, yeah. Like, we have them here, but not like they do in the U.S. We yeah, here, yeah, in the U.S., it's like an event. Here, it's like yeah. a suggestion. <laughs> Maybe you'll go shopping. But even the deals are so much better. Like, we went to Walmart to pick something up for the dinner, and we're walking around on the Wednesday, and they're already putting their stuff out on the thir for the Thursday sale at 6 o'clock for the preview. Wow. But there's 55-inch 4K TVs for 200 bucks. And that's American. So, okay, no, we, You're not supposed no, no, to no. tell me what you got me for Christmas. No, I didn't get you anything. That's not better than the <laughs> Canadian deal because at Walmart, a on Black Friday, 55 inch TV um, was $300 Canadian. That's wow. still more expensive. Oh, I don't when know. When you factor in the no, exchange. No, $200 rate. American is about $7,000 Canadian. Mm, no, it's 76 cents on the dollar. Here, no, though, here know. in Canada, in Canada, uh, when the last TV is on the shelf, we all stand around it and say, would you like the TV? <laughs> would you like? No, 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 you, please. What are it you planning on it using takes this forever. TV for? Yeah. yeah. <laughs> you, do you, do you, what, what's your current TV? You, no, no, you take, you know what? I, I'll pay for it. You take it. Yeah. You know what? True. I'll buy this TV, but I'm just going to give you some money towards your next one. Because there you I go. know that you're going to need to find one. Yeah. It probably won't be a great deal. Oh, <laughs> the deals are crazy. I couldn't believe it. Yeah. It's, it's a whole new life. And then when I came across the border, they're like, because I came across on the Friday, they're like, do, do you have to, anything to declare? I'm like, <laughs> no. And when you said no, did they go, yeah, right. It's Black Friday. <laughs> the lady looked at the back of my car. She's like, you didn't do any shopping? <laughs> what no. are you doing here? <laughs> it's Black Friday. What are you doing in America? Give me a break. Yeah, but weirdest, they're still talking about this weird Canadian that 
<laughs> they kept asking me to say house and about and all yeah, that. And uh, I'm like, I, we get I don't that. hear it. We get that. I just don't hear yeah. it. So. Um, so for me, for Black Friday, Cyber Monday, Cyber Week, yeah. uh, it's been Amazon and yes. shopping online. Me and too. Yeah. Yes. So. It's such a cool way to support Category 5 as well because... And, I just and did. I, Thank you, dude. Uh, and I want to say thanks to those of you who have been doing that as well. If you shop online anyways, all you have to do is go to our website, category5.tv, click on support us, and then you'll see our partner links. And the partner links are basically, uh, they're affiliate links. So if mm -hmm. you want to shop on Amazon, you click on Amazon from our site, and then a portion of the sale goes to supporting Category 5 TV. Now, we were talking before the show, Sasha, one of the things that we want to do here is upgrade our camera. Mm -hmm. Yes. And that's, you know, you, you look at it and you think, oh, that looks great. And, you know, we, we get, it gets the job done. And, you do but, look great. Aw, oh, thanks. <laughs> um, but um, it's still, our, here's the thing. Our cameras are 1080p. And, and because the show is 1080p, you would think that's a great match. But when we zoom in, mm -hmm. of course, we're zooming in on a 1080p video. Right. And so we're losing quality. So, if, for example, when we zoom in on Sasha during the newsroom, you may or may not notice, but it actually, we're zooming in digitally on a 1080p canvas. So we're losing quality in that video. So with a 4K camera, uh, we would be able to uh, zoom in losslessly and not, and not have that graininess. So all that to say, we really would love to get a, a 4K camera here. And that's one of the things that I'd like to, to do with some of the, the revenue that comes from things like shopping on Amazon. Exactly. It's the best. And if you shop on Amazon, you don't have to leave your house. Your presents just come to you. Yeah, you know, it's awesome. and my wife Becca <laughs> and I sat down in the basement, her on the family desktop, me on my laptop, and we both were shopping. Mm -hmm. um, so we, we discussed for each other, for each other, but also for the kids and and um, said to like, so basically, so she wouldn't see what I'm buying for her. Right. I wouldn't see what she's buying for me, but we would coordinate what we were getting for the kids. Did you use different accounts or do Two you different log account. in after? We actually <laughs> signed her up for an account. That's smart. Yeah. And uh, so that that worked. So um, but it really what it changed for us and what it's changing for us is the fact that now uh, we've got a lot of the big stuff done. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? So mm -hmm. I don't have to, I don't have to try to find the big gifts. Now right. it's just like, it's like stocking stuffers and things. And you know, there's two sides to every coin. I know that, you know, I want to support local and everything else, but uh, fact is, is, you know, I got great deals and we've got a lot of our, you know, the shopping done and the mm -hmm. stress was like not there. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Not it's there nice. at all beautiful it's good. so thanks again to everybody who's been uh, who's been using those links we appreciate that uh, and as you as you do your christmas shopping like we're partnered with think geek ebay yes. amazon all of these uh, companies so you can you can go onto our website for those uh also welcome to all of our new viewers if you're just tuning in for the first time want to say hello uh my name's robbie i'm jeff I'm Sasha. And we, uh, we are here uh, in some form or another every single week. And uh, we just love having you here. And we love bringing you tech. Uh, we, we actually broadcast the show live. And then you're watching it on demand, whether you're watching it on cable TV or on YouTube or on our website, however you're watching. Uh, but what you see is actually a live broadcast. Yes. So, you know, sometimes we make mistakes. Sometimes things don't go exactly <gasps> perfect. And that's kind of part of the fun and you can catch us on those kinds of things. If you're able to, you can also join us live at uh, 7 o'clock Eastern time. So we're just north of Toronto, Ontario uh, on Wednesday nights. And then you'll be able to tune in live, join the chat room. Hey, chat room. Hello. And, uh, you know, that kind of stuff. So... Uh, we have a video game uh, that we're giving away a bunch of copies. It's called Dead Effect 2 VR. This yeah. year, if you, if you think you might get a VR headset under the tree, well, listen up, because all you have to do is email us. Right. Sasha, you want to give them the info? Contest at Category5.tv. Yeah. In your email, let us know how you're watching. That's and it. That's it. Want to know who you are? Oh. Where? Well, it'd be nice to know where you're watching from, too. Yeah. Uh, you know, so where you're watching from, how you're watching, whether it be YouTube or however. Exactly. Um, but also, uh, so what we're doing is we're giving away a bunch of copies of Dead Effect 2 VR. It's on Steam. Uh, and so we're giving away the coupon code so then you can download it to your computer and play it with your VR headset. Um, it's pretty cool. It's, I mean, it's a first-person shooter. It's uh, not, not necessarily appropriate for the kids, uh, but certainly uh, for you and I, uh, we'd, we'd have a lot of fun with that. Oh, yeah. Yeah. For sure. 
Uh, we've got to take a really quick break. Exciting show for you tonight. We're going to actually be learning a little bit um, about uh, how we can make our podcasts, our videos, uh, our YouTube channel, all these things, how we can make them sound better. We're going to be using a tool that is available online. Stick around. We'll be right back. Whether you shop on ThinkGeek, GearBest, B&H Photo Video, eBay, or Amazon, or even if you want a free trial of Audible, you'll find the best deals and support the shows we produce by simply visiting the shopping sites you already frequent by using the links on our website. Visit Category5.tv slash partners for the full and ever-growing list and help us create more free content like this show. Thank you for shopping with our partners, and thank you for watching. Welcome back. This is Category 5 Technology TV, and tonight we're looking at a program called Auphonic. Check them out. Auphonic? Yeah, Auphonic. Like audio phonics. Oh, Oh. A-U-P-H-O-N-I-C? Yeah. Yes. Well right. done, well done, ah, dot com. And okay, so here's the thing. If you have ever thought about podcasting, if you're podcasting already, um, and if you're, th- maybe you're thinking, what, what's podcasting? <laughs> <laughs> so maybe we should just back it up a little bit. Um, okay, so podcasting is like the new radio, if you will. I mean, that's it's where been around we get for a while, though. It, well, it, I say new, it's like, it's, it, as, as YouTube is to video and, to t- and mm-hmm. Netflix is to TV, podcasting is to the old school radio shows yes. of, of uh, you know storytelling and and even news and everything else um, but it's online you can aggregate it which means to download or listen to new episodes as they come out um, Sasha what podcasts do you frequent any podcasts no podcasts yes. You know, I am I am not a podcast person. I'm an audio bo- I'm an audiobook person. I'm surrounded by anti-podcasters. It's, it's not that I'm anti-podcast. It's I, okay. I have I haven't found one yet. Well, that, that's part of it, but I I want to experience as many books as possible cuz I can't okay. like I'm always on the road. Right. So I would I would love to read, so mm-hmm. audiobooks is my thing. I yeah, and I'm not going to lie to you. I have a brand new super amazing computer at home. All oh I do right, is play yeah. Video games. <laughs> That's all you do. <laughs> <laughs> what about you? Uh, I would have to say probably Josh and Chuck are my go-to. Uh, okay. Whenever there, you know, there's a new episode every few days. Uh, that's uh, stuff you should know. And uh, and what that podcast is is uh, so I listen to that just on my headphones from my phone, and it's every week just something they want to teach you about mm-hmm. so it could be anything and so every week you've got three new episodes or well two new episodes and uh one from long ago because they've been on the air for like a thousand plus episodes so i wonder if they're the one that time. i listened to about a month ago yeah. where they were they did a um an investigation on whether f- your facebook actually listens to you or not i did listen to one about a month ago oh, yeah? on that it was I really good i doubt it because josh and chuck usually don't get into technical things no okay it's not a tech them. podcast it's it's very name much familiar, like though. just um, like little facts. Oh, okay. Like stuff. It's called stuff you should. Um, now, <laughs> stuff you should know. No. Yeah. <laughs> I listen to it every week, but I have no clue what well, it's you know, called. You know when you're spelling <laughs> words like weird, and yes. and you're typing it into your computer in that moment, and you're like, is the I before E except after C or? That's yeah, the stuff, weirdest. That's not something you should ever you know. Should I feel know like that's the I before E except after C is not a real rule. No, it's not. Because the exceptions Caffeine, are... Caffeine, weird. <laughs> I'm just saying, have you ever had those instances? So that's yes. what just happened to me. Uh, <laughs> that's what called, that's called so podcasts are just anomia. something you listen to. So if you are a podcaster, let's get into our feature now. Yes. <laughs> so, and, and if you, and this can be, you know, if, you, if you're publishing videos on YouTube, my son is, um, is absolutely in love with... Uh, um, editing his own videos. He's got a video camera. He's getting into that. Um, 
Psh, I got him a microphone for Christmas. Nice. Uh, so, you know, all these kinds of things. But when he records, sometimes the volume's really loud. Sometimes the volume's quiet. Mm. Um, sometimes he's clipping. Sometimes it's, it's too low. And then he adds music and you can't hear the voice over the music. And right. so it becomes this kind of crazy, you know, really difficult to edit and really hard for him. Now, looking at a more professional standpoint, so looking at, say, Category 5 technology TV, for example. Here, um, we have three microphones. Right. Sasha's a bit quieter than me. Jeff is, has a booming, commanding voice. So I do. Yeah. So what happens if one of us is really loud or, you know, Sasha's a little quieter or Sasha laughs hysterically at one of my jokes? That happens. <laughs> So frequently. Yeah. So in those instances, you need to use things like compressors. We have hardware compressors. We've got um, an exciter, which kind of makes the sound a little nicer. But one of the secrets in our tool chest is called Auphonic. And Auphonic now takes the... Uh, the the audio from our video mm -hmm. and it does a lot of magic to it. I'm going to call it magic because it really is uh, as far as what it can do. So it has what's called an intelligent leveler. I'm just going to kind of go through the, the specifications here. This is like just off of their website, alphonic.com, just so you have an idea what it does. So it magically fixes levels. It magically removes things like motor noise from the background oh, and things cool. like that. So when the ladies do uh, uh, an in-car dash cam episode of new every day for example running it through a phonic cleans it up quite nicely hmm. um, so the intelligence leveler um, makes sure that the speakers and the music are, uh, are of a good level uh, but it also makes sure that it's broadcast quality so if it's too hot or too loud it's going to bring it down to a proper level and it's right. going to keep it there throughout the entire uh, uh, now it's audio only um, we use it for video because video contains audio so um, you don't need to understand how a compressor works. Compressors are notoriously right. difficult. Uh, remember when we were in radio and I we'd always have that. to call the engineer yes. when the compressor would uh, have trouble? Yes. And in radio, you know, that's something that we use to keep the levels. Oh, so yeah. The DJs always sound be uh, a little bit above the music. The station lives and dies by the compressor. Oh, yeah, absolutely. And a good compressor makes sound. a station sound good and a yep. bad compressor makes it sound horrible. Uh, so... With this, you don't need an engineer. You don't need to be an engineer. You don't even need to understand how software, how to do anything other than click your mouse about three times. That's it. Uh, loudness normalization is another feature. Um, that specifically is what keeps that peak limit um, right. at that broadcast level. So we do minus 16 decibels, uh, which is podcast and you know online audio. Uh, so if you watch last week's episode and then this week's episode, you'll notice that our levels, the volume is exactly the same. Have you ever been watching cable TV and the commercial start yes. and it's oh. super loud and you've got to turn down? That's oh, the yeah. worst, actually. Because the commercials are not going through the broadcast compressor. Oh, okay. So it's not the same levels. Oh, I thought it was so, just yeah. to wake you up off the couch. It might do that, too. <laughs> yeah, so, so with us, from episode to episode, you're never going to have to worry about adjusting your, um, your audio, your volume. Right. Uh, and that's because of Auphonic. It has audio restoration, which removes the hum, and it does some filtering magic that cleans up low frequencies, gets rid of that kind of low rumble stuff that's really annoying as you're listening on headphones or if you have a subwoofer. Um, there is a multi-track version, indeed, uh, oh, okay. that allows you to um, take multiple audio sources and mix them together, and it will do magic across all oh, of nice. the multi-track uh, files. So, for example, if, if we were recording our mics separately, we could actually... In fact, e equalize it all in a, a much Beautiful. more intuitive way. But it does great with just a stereo or mono track as well. Right. Um, but so that's two different versions. There's a multi-track and just a normal like pump a wave file into it and it'll do it. Um, it has, um, they've been introducing on their web version because you can do this without software. You can do it on the website. Speech recognition, which is very, really? very cool. So what does that do? Does it just... How does that work? Recognize the speech. Uh, right. It creates a web v VTT right. file, which is uh, a format that is uh, basically closed captions for web. Right. So if you, mm -hmm. if you do a podcast and you want closed captions, this is a way to do that. It also makes it so that the text that you speak is um, able to be searched. 
That's it's cool. Yes. Oh, okay. So love that. Now we're using similar kind of technology here um, to create our closed captions right. um, using automatic closed captioning. And we actually have a Git GitHub repository where folks like yourself can submit um, edits to our actual captions. Um, so get on over to github.com slash cat5tv slash... Um, uh, well, you'll find it there. Go and repo. <laughs> I can't remember what did what did I name it. Go to my my GitHub page, and you'll see. Uh, if you do a search in the repositories, just do a search for captions. I think it's called like Cat Five TV Dash Captions or something like that. All right. So, uh, then it also does encoding, so it'll save them to FLAC files. Uh, it works with multiple different file formats now: MP3, AAC, MP4, whatever, um, and you know so on and so forth. So it it cleans this up. Right. Here's the thing. It's Windows only. Oh, mm. okay. No, it's not Windows only. It's Windows and Mac only. No uh, Linux. No Linux. Oh, so okay. when I said Windows only, I, I'm a Windows or Mac, uh, Windows or Linux user. I don't right. have a Mac, so I don't think too much on the Mac side of things. But it's Windows or Mac. That's okay. what's available, okay? So tonight I'm going to show you the software, but I'm also going to teach you how to install it and make it work in Linux. Ooh. Ah. Okay, because it's a double feature. Yeah. So we're going to learn how a phonic works, how it does all this magic, what it does. And uh, we're also going to learn how to do, uh, how to make it work in Linux. So that said, if you're doing this on Mac or Windows, you don't need to follow all the steps to get it working on Linux because you're not on Linux. But I wanted to show you because a lot of podcasters are using free software like Audacity on, uh, on right. Ubuntu, for example. So here's an opportunity for you to clean up your audio. Now, this is a commercial software, but you can buy it outright and then you own it and you get updates for all time, basically. Yeah. Um, but also, um, there is an online version that you can just upload your files to and you get two hours free per month. And it will clean awesome. it up. Yeah, it's very cool, especially if you're a smaller, uh, you know, you're doing little little files and um, shorter files. Now, we do um, probably about 10 hours a week, so yeah. um, so it wouldn't work for us. But um, And another reason that I don't use the online version personally is because I found, that's how we first started using it, I found that exporting the audio from my video and then uploading the audio to a phonic, then waiting for it to encode, then downloading it back, and then transmuxing it back into my video was just a pain. Yeah, that's a lot. Yeah. But if you're a podcast and you've got an MP3 file, throw it on there, let it clean it up, download it, and put it on your website. Yeah, and you're good to go. Done. Yeah. HD video is a, a whole other can of worms. That's true. Um, so on Ubuntu, let's get right into it. I've got a bare bones install of Ubuntu 17.10. So here we are. It's uh, November of uh, 2017 as we broadcast this. So this is the current version of Ubuntu. I'm going to jump into Terminal. And there's a couple of prerequisites that I'm going to need to, um, to do this. Um, and before I do, uh, now I've already downloaded, I'll just let you know just in case we had any internet dropouts or whatever, I already downloaded Auphonic, but I'll show you how you can get it. Uh, if you head on over to Auphonic.com, and then up at the top right hand side, once you're logged in, so create an account, it's free to do so, you'll see a button that says Desktop Apps. And when you go there, uh, just scroll down to the one that you're looking for. So as I mentioned, we've got the uh, this standard um, like single file batch processor. Uh, that's a phonic leveler. And then we've got a phonic multi-track. Now tonight we're going to look at the Aphonic leveler, but they're both going to function fairly similarly. Um, but the multi-track does require that you have multiple files. So this tells you all about it. Go there, check it out, uh, and then download latest version. So once you've purchased it, you can click on that, and then you've got um, two options, Mac and Windows. So I'm actually going to download the Windows version okay. for my Linux machine. Now, quick question about yes. the multi-track. You said it requires more than one track. Yes. More than one file more than one to file? be tracked. Okay. Yes. All right. So what happens if you happen to have a single file one day? Do you then you want a phonic license? leveler. Okay. But when you buy one license, you're good for both? No. They are okay. two different products All right. that serve two different purposes. Now, that said, you could technically put your track into the multi, if you want the multi-track version. You could hack around it by creating a single file that is m muted. Right. That's okay. just quiet, right? And Makes put sense. it put it as the second track, and so be it, right? Okay. Um, that's fine. Uh, or you could do left and right. You oh, could, okay. You could yep. separate 
the stereo uh, tracks and turn them into two tracks if you wanted to. So now I've actually, so I've already downloaded those. So if I look in downloads, there they are. I've got both of them there. So I can't run Windows programs on Linux. You know that. Um, so what am I going to do? If I click on it, what does it do? Oh, it opens it in Archive Manager and then gives me an error. So that's the kind of thing that you're up against on Linux. And Sasha, you and I had a little talk about this uh, using Wine and even right. VirtualBox or something like that to virtualize. Wine allows you to install and run Windows applications on Linux. So mm -hmm. that's what we're going to use. It's basically it's a, a, a layer between Linux and the Windows application that gives you the capabilities of, of running Windows programs. So sudo sue on Ubuntu is going to let me become root. And I simply need to install. So I go apt. Technically, I should do apt update ampersand ampersand, which says, if this is successful, then apt install wine. And there are two different versions that I can go with. So if I do apt search wine dash, let's see what it gives me. Um, we've got wine development and wine stable. So right now on November, in November of 2017, stable is 2.0.2 and development is 2.18. So I actually want the development version um, because it has features that are not available in the stable version because right. they haven't made their way there yet. So I'm going to get the latest and greatest. It's not considered stable. It has some things that have not passed um, like full testing at this point, but it, it works very, very well. And we want those extra features. So I'm going to go apt update, ampersand, ampersand, apt install, wine dash development. And if you're having trouble running some of your Windows programs, it may be because you're running the stable version of wine uh, because that is it's not as far along. And it's always growing. It's always getting better. Do you want to install all this stuff? Yeah. That's why we're here. <laughs> this is what I'm doing. That's what I said. I could have used dash dash yes, <laughs> and that would have done it for me. So this goes through. Now, Ubuntu and Linux, Debian, um, what they do is they go out on the web and they just grab the files and install the things that you asked for. Mm -hmm. So when I say I want wine dash um, development, it is grabbing it off the internet, and that's what's happening right here. I don't have to find it on the web. I don't have to compile it. I don't have to... Remember the days when Linux was complicated? <laughs> yes. I'm standing here enjoying a cup of joe. We're chatting it up and just watching it download and get its stuff. Look at that. It's just going away. Going away. Boom. 100%. Now it's extracting. There we go. So now it's installing, extracting, setting up everything that we need in order to run Windows programs on Linux. And I mean, even as we've just been talking, you can see how quickly it accesses the files, downloads them, installs them. Like It's, it's not like it takes a long time no this is oh, we're no. talking minutes here this is oh, great yeah. I, might, I might get a couple sips <laughs> we're not going to make you sit through all of that though <laughs> but this is again at the top of the show i mentioned that we're a live show so you get to see everything as it happens so mm -hmm. if our internet went down right now <laughs> that's the end folks <laughs> <laughs> we've been there before yeah, it's <laughs> happened it's happened and that's why i downloaded a phonic ahead of time just in case but wine i wanted to show you the process of actually installing that so with Wine, so this is only applicable if you're using Linux, okay, folks? So if you're on Windows and Mac, don't worry about it. Um, with Wine, now that said, I think you can install Wine on Mac. Yes, you can. Yeah. So, so maybe you do want to listen up if you're a Mac user. And we need to talk about that exploit that happened this week as well. We'll Ooh, talk about yes. that in a little bit. Um, but um, it allows you to run a lot of Windows programs on Linux or Mac, presumably. Mm -hmm. um, so it's not going to run every program. And as I mentioned, we're going with the development version because it runs more programs. It's got more features that allow more programs to work. So the stable version, maybe you would have trouble with Alphonic. If you do, make sure you install the development version. Mm -hmm. I've got wine. Look it's at that. done. So now you say, OK, now I can, now I can click on it, right? Well, no. Nope. Still have an error. And so this is where people say, uh, and, and I'm, sa I'm generalizing, but I, I looked at forums who were trying to figure out, how can I get Alphonic to work on, on Linux? And people are saying, it, it just doesn't work. And Wine doesn't work. When I install it, it doesn't do anything. And, and you know, it doesn't, what am I supposed mm -hmm. to do now? I installed, I, so let's do phase two. 
Want to learn a little bit of Linux? Absolutely. All right. So right now, yeah, we can't just double click on it. It's it's not we're not there yet. So what I'm going to do instead, I'm going to go into my downloads folder. It's case sensitive on Linux and Mac. So those are my two executable files. I can't run them. They're EXEs. They're Windows files. But I have Wine. First of all, I notice that I am currently root. Okay. okay. You must become non-root in order to do this because non-root. Well, I've installed it as root. Right. But I need okay. to be my user because who's going to use it? Root? Right. No. Fair enough. I'm going to use it. So I need to create my Wine profile as Robbie. So I'm just going to type exit, which takes me back to the Robbie user. Who am I? Robbie. <laughs> Okay. In case there was any question. Yeah. <laughs> Who am I? If it says Great. Stanley, I'm like, what? Uh, so now that I am me and I'm, I'm back out of my downloads folder, let's get back in there. There we go. I'm going to just simply type wine. Yeah. A phonic leveler, G-U-I-1 win dot E-X-E. Hit enter. First thing it does is it sets up wine. See that? The wine configuration <laughs> is being updated. So it's not installing yet. It's in fact configurating wine. Configurating? Yes. Again. It's, it's another a word cat I just word. made up. So I can do that because I own the show. So come on now. I swear we need to have a Cat5 dictionary. I think it's coming. Uh, it's in the works. It'll be on Amazon by the end of the year. Yeah. What do you notice? Look at that. Looks so, a little Windowsy. It does. Mm-hmm. I agree. Georg, if anybody asks, I read that. <laughs> Where are you going to install it? Now, I don't have a C drive. What are you talking about? Well, what Wine did when I ran it just there and it configured itself. Configured. Watch this. Control L. I'm only showing you this just so that you see. There's Wine and in the wine folder. No way, is, it made a drive C. It made a drive C that contains all your Windows stuff. That's awesome. So it's not a real drive, it's just a folder within your home folders tree. Right. So that's where it's gonna actually put it. Uh, so C is actually saving in my home folder, uh, in a subfolder of that. So I'm just gonna hit install and just see what happens. Look at that go. Oh yeah. Nice and quick. Just like you would expect, right? Completed? What? Okay, so there's one more thing that I need to do. We're going to be working with Wave files. Wave right. uses a tool called Lame. And unlike the name, it is absolutely awesome. <laughs> so we need to install that. Again, Linux, I need to become root again. And apt, I don't need to update again because they probably haven't released new versions in the past five minutes. Install Lame. Well, that was easy. Boom. All right. So now I can click on to my applications. And what do I see? Look at that. Auphonic. Yeah. So, moment of truth here, folks. Will Auphonic Leveler run on Linux? Click it. Oh, it worked. Okay. You have to activate it. I need to activate it because it is, as I said, it's a commercial application. Right. So I'm going to grab my password here so we'll just conveniently change screens. Perfect. Yeah. <sighs> Grab that password. That's exciting. You like it? Yeah. It makes it, you know, we I don't cover. I haven't shown you what it does yet. We don't, but we don't cover wine enough mm. to show just how to get access to some of these programs for those who are purely Linux users. Mm -hmm. So it's great to even show that little component so they go, oh, I'm going to install that software. Mind blown. I'm installing a Windows program and using a Windows program on a free operating system. Did I mention Linux is free? Mm -hmm. Okay, so I've got my license there uh, ready to go. I'm going to hit login. Bam. Up and running. How simple can the interface be, right? So that's all there is to it. Okay, so we need an audio file to work with here, folks. Uh, so I'm going to bring up Audacity. And we're going to pretend that we're going to be podcasting here. Pretend podcasting? Yeah, we're just going to pretend. All right. What, what's our pretend podcast going to be about? Oh, boy. It could be about anything. Anything. Let's make it about wine. Wine. <laughs> no, no, the one that lets you run Windows on Linux. Oh. Yeah. 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 <laughs> it's 
supposed to consider we're using I should be excited. But <laughs> Audacity, Audacity. Right it. It's funny that the Linux native program is the one that's giving me grief. There it is. There it go. just came up. Yeah. Uh, okay. So let's uh, start monitoring here. Ah, ah, ah. Okay. I need to turn on my microphone. I think it's muted. No. It's, well, it is, yeah. <laughs> no, <but I'm> <laughs> <laughs> there we go. Okay, we've got levels. I think it's muted. <laughs> yeah, there is no levels, Jeff. <laughs> Sorry, uh, Phonic can't help you with that. All right, let's, uh, let's do this podcast. Hey, how's everybody doing? Oh, you pulled out Ronnie Radio. Oh, I have no idea what you're talking about. Right, so from I'm, Radio Days. Oh, oh, the the Radio Robbie. Yeah, because yeah. when I was on, on the air, it was way back in the day. Yes. Back in the old school Radio Days. Back when you had hair. I think my audition tape was like, good afternoon. Yeah. Um, so that's just going into Audacity. We're recording Hi. it directly. And so Jeff just made waves, if you will. Sasha, can I hear you say can, something? Can you hear me with it? I wonder. I don't know. But can it hear here's me? the thing. When, when you did a feature where you were walking around right. with this bad boy, the H4N, That's we right. needed Auphonic to fix the levels because you were right. talking like this and then you'd hold it out and you were three feet away from the person you were talking to. Which is why I went close. So you've got the different Yeah, levels. yeah, exactly, right. exactly. So let's just, you know, move this thing around as if, we're, okay, so hey, here's Robbie and Jeff. Hello. And uh, over here at Sasha, I can't really reach <laughs> over because we're on different cameras. Hey. <laughs> Test one, two. That's all I get. Yeah. Hey, yeah. Hey, hey. Yeah. hey. <laughs> she just freezes. Put a mic like, in front of her. Wait, yeah. what's happening? Okay. Oh, yeah, exactly. <laughs> so um, the point with Auphonic is it's going to make the levels sound a lot better. So let's, let's get a look at what's going to happen here. So I'm just going to stop our recording. All right. And we're going to go file, export audio. I'm just going to slap that on my desktop and we're going to I'll just call this test.wave. That was a solid podcast. I tune in every week. Oh yeah, that. absolutely. <laughs> Great no, that, content. That was <laughs> educational, <laughs> inspiring, it's uplifting. True. Uh yeah, absolutely. I okay. think we deserve a broadcasting award. That's right. <laughs> we just got a webby for that. <laughs> okay, here we are in Auphonic. Now, at this point, it's the same for Windows, Linux, Mac. So, don't you worry. Um this is, this is the same interface for you. So if you're on Windows, you didn't need to do all the wine stuff. Now we've got a file here. You saw it go in. I'm going to open it. It's on my desktop, which is in home, Robbie, desktop, test.wave. It's grabbed it. So if I've got some low noise, hum, and stuff like that, I simply can turn on noise and hum reduction. Look at that. Easy peasy. Uh, it has the adaptive leveler and the high pass filter, and I've set it to, oh, and I said decibels, <laughs> minus 16 decibels, no, LUFs. Um, and, and then we've got all these, you know, it shows you the standard. Uh, minus 16 is, is pretty standard for podcasts. Okay, so there we go. File's ready to go. I'm going to hit process all files, and that is all I have to do. Oh, that's it. That's it. Oh, see, I... I'm picturing when you're talking about the software that you're going to see, like the wave levels and all that. It's okay. Uh, Auphonic is is going to fix the audio for us. Ah, uh, see, but I, now, all right. Now let's look at the let's look at the uh, wave table now. So bring that up into Audacity. Oh, I closed Audacity. <laughs> <laughs> the Audacity. <laughs> that's why they that's why they called it that. I feel like we need the Jeopardy music here. Just something. For to load. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> so but that oh. that worked and I, I mean it went through and And that was quick and it's done. Well, I mean the podcast was only 4 hours long, right? Um, <laughs> one of the things that you'll four notice it, it gives you a little bit of a report here and just going to see if we can see that behind here. It also detects things like if you've got music playing and it will it will find the points that are music and it will adjust accordingly. Wow. Look at that. Okay. Notice we don't clip. Everything looks clean and levels are and positively beautiful. And I believe this is the section where I went real close to the mic and was going to see. Yeah, I, I think that was it. You think it is? Ready? I believe so. Okay. Hold on. Are we, li are we listening? Listening, listening? I don't know that we can hear. Hi. Directly. And so yeah, I'm pretty sure that was it. So what we're going to do, um, let's bring up the, uh, the other file as well, so the original, so that you can see the difference uh, as far as wave table goes. So this is a visual representation of the audio. Wow! That's our original recording. 
And how do I task over on a phonic? Let's just do this. That's now. That is okay. Awesome. So yeah, that's where. Yeah, and even where Sasha was speaking at near the end of the file there. Yeah. Like you could really see the difference. It was so super eloquent. What I'm going to do here. <laughs> We can't play this to, to ourselves right now, but what I'll do is I'm going to play this for you. So a moment of silence. This is a clip from the original recording. All right, let's, uh, let's do this podcast. Hey, how's everybody doing? Oh, you pulled out Ronnie Radio. Can you hear me with this? Point with Alphonic because it's going to make the levels sound a lot better. So let's, let's get a look at what's going to happen here. So I'm just going to stop our recording. Right. Now here is the exact same clip run through a phonic all right let's uh let's do this podcast hey how's everybody doing oh you pulled out ronnie radio can you hear me with it i wonder point with a phonic is it's going to make the levels sound a lot better so let's let's get a look at what's going to happen here so i'm just going to stop our recording and i love how jeff was like feigning like ooh, <laughs> ah ooh, because we it's couldn't hear silent that. in here but i'm like oh what a significant difference. So if you're podcasting, if you're doing YouTube videos, whatever you're doing, you need a phonic. Get it at aphonic.com. I'm not kidding. It took me a while to, to do it, to, to, take, uh, to get a phonic and say, you know what, I'm going to make this a part of my... That's so simple. I used to use Levelator. I used to use all kinds of filters and try to f fix things up myself. Uh, this does a better job than any of the other tools that I've ever used. It's a one, like just a couple of clicks to just make your audio sound absolutely stupendous. Hmm. So there you have it, folks, Aphonic.com. Sasha, we've got to uh, head over to the newsroom. So if you are ready, my friend, oh. I love putting you on the spot like that because I, 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 could, I could look over at the teleprompter and see that she's not I'm not. I was 100% in the <laughs> chat room. That's fantastic. Hey, uh, I hope everybody's doing well over there. Yeah, they're good. Oh, yeah. They're, they're chatting away. They're yep. chatting. In good, the room. good. Okay. Please hold while I adjust. <laughs> She's like, really weren't ready. <laughs> She's got to do her hair. This is so typical. So oh. typical. Hey. Of you, <laughs> Here are the stories we're covering this week in the Category 5.TV newsroom. A hard drive has been stolen from an exclusive club containing the personal details of members such as Stephen Fry and Lord Reese. The U.S. government is funding mind control chip research. Getting a drone for Christmas? If you're in the U.K., you may have to consider new legislation coming this spring. Uber's driver and customer data has been compromised, and they've paid hackers to try and cover it up. And Skype has been removed from app stores in China. These stories are coming right up. Don't go anywhere. Jeff Weston. Yeah, man. You're building a brand new beautiful website. What? Aren't you? No. Am I? Oh, you're a terrible actor. What? This is where acting comes into play. Oh, I didn't know we were acting. You're supposed to act. Okay, fair enough. All right. yeah, I'm building a really cool website. Are you building a really cool website? Just because Jeff is confused doesn't mean you have to be. Visit cat5.tv slash dreamhost to sign up for unlimited web hosting for your website with unlimited email accounts, MySQL databases, the latest version of PHP, WordPress, and more, and even a free domain name registration. It's less than $6 per month, so sign up today. cat5.tv slash dreamhost. This is the Category 5.TV Newsroom, covering the week's top tech stories with a slight Linux bias. I'm Sasha Rickman, and here are the top stories we're following this week. Members of an exclusive club that is restricted to selected graduates of Oxford and Cambridge, universities are being warned that computer data containing their personal details is feared stolen. The club believes that a backup hard drive has been taken from a locked room inside its London headquarters. The information stored on it is said to include names, home addresses, phone numbers, and some bank details. The 5,000 members, including celebrities such as Stephen Fry, have been, there, have been affected. Both the police and the members have been notified and private investigators hired. Although the Duke of Edinburgh and Prince of Wales are honorary members of the club, data about them has not been exposed, according to the Telegraph. However, it did add that Lord Reese, one of the country's leading astrophysicists, is among those thought to be affected.
The UK's Information Commissioner's Office says that companies need to protect their patrons' data in suggesting the use of encryption as well as ensuring that quality doors and locks are used. Wow. So, like, an actual situation where information has actually, like, like the hard copy has been stolen. Oh, yeah. We had this happen at a Canadian government office. You remember that? Oh, yeah, that's right. A few, yeah, few right. years back when, uh, I think it was, like, like social insurance numbers and everything. And yeah, and if I recall correctly, it was, like, potentially an Interpol type thing because oh, he was hanging out with a girlfriend from drive. another country or something. Oh, wow. Well, the... <laughs> the details um but it, it's just a hard drive full of data so here you know five thousand members and and the hard drive has the data on it and right i wonder if it's an employee it then if it's a locked yeah, I wonder room if, eh? right. a- in a very exclusive club so if it wasn't an employee it's got to be somebody who's a member of the club and these are folks that are not probably in need of uh, uh stealing a hard drive right i feel like they're implying that encryption wasn't done like the hard drive wasn't encrypted they're not really saying I, they yeah. did say that the, it was password protected okay. um but um what that means i mean is it an excel spreadsheet with a password on it that can easily be brute forced right. um, who knows that's the thing um, that, that's not the last of this i would say oh, not that's likely. Not, definitely not <laughs> yeah right <laughs> All right. The Pentagon's Defense Advanced Research Projects Agency, or DARPA, is funding researchers who are working on some kind of mind control chips that can be inserted into human brains to fix mood disorders. The researchers from the University of California and Massachusetts General Hospital in Boston have reportedly begun testing closed-loop brain implants. These neural implants use artificial intelligence algorithms to detect various mood disorders and to deliver electric shocks to jolt a person's brain back into a healthy state. The implants, which generate electrical pulses to control human feelings and behavior, can stimulate the brain to treat mental disorders including dementia and Alzheimer's. Experts also believe that the chips can be beneficial to patients with a whole range of health issues like Parkinson's disease and chronic depression. The chips have already been tested on six volunteers who have epilepsy and have electrodes implanted in their brain to help researchers track what is happening inside their brains throughout the day. As part of their trial, the researchers tracked the volunteers' brain activity and moods in detail over the course of one to three weeks and eventually created an algorithm to decode these changing moods. Further analysis helped the researchers discover that delivering shocks to areas of the brain that involve decision-making and emotions can significantly improve the per- participants' performance in set tasks, such as matching images of numbers or identifying emotions on faces. The group is currently working with neuroethicists to address the moral implications of the project. <laughs> That's what? my big concern right there, is the yeah. moral ethics of... The project. I mean, I think it's cool if you can get a little chip that, you know, potentially could eradicate some of those yeah. things like epilepsy. Parkinson's. Or, sure, yeah, yeah, I mean, that'd be amazing. But, I mean, how quickly could you turn around and be like, well, we're just going to implant this into our soldiers and suddenly you're controlling people. What if you're doing it afterwards and controlling some PTSD? How's this going to play into marriages? <laughs> Always happy all the time. <laughs> look at Every my day. face. Look at my face. Do I look happy? Do you recognize yes, you this look happy? emotion? No, I'm not happy. <laughs> <laughs> With every implant, you get a free marriage certificate. <laughs> wow. I love the idea of this uh, like to help against something like chronic depression or epilepsy yes. or Parkinson's. Sure, drug-free. Right? A it, drug-free solution. Yeah. And what is the brain but uh, like the organ that is an electrical impulse machine? It makes sense that it oh, would be like, it's too it complex. We don't understand it. You can't just open a computer and say, okay, what's wrong with this? I'm going to start short-circuiting some of the electrical components. Well, see, and some of it isn't like, I, I'm thinking something like depression. Right. You know, that's a serotonin level. Like, that's not something that you can you know, fix with a shock to the brain. I mean, well, perhaps hmm. maybe it's not the serotonin Could that's be, the problem. It's the, the, like the reuptakers, like the, cause a, 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 a depression drug is a serotonin reuptake inhibitor. 
So the serotonin Correct. gets yes. eaten too I much. Have, this is what it must feel like to hear me talk about computers. <laughs> it's true! <laughs> I, I was listening uh, to the radio on my way into the studio today, and, and interestingly enough, there was a show on where people were in the audience were asking questions, and then they had professionals in the industry answering these questions. It was really quite entertaining and, and informative. And one of the questions was, what is the cause of chronic pain? And how, how does it exist if there is no injury? Mm -hmm. Right. And the, the response from this professional from a university, I uh, didn't catch their name or anything like that and didn't even intend to speak about it, uh, said that it, it is actually the, the neurons in uh, the pain receptors and everything else misfiring and, and, t mm -hmm. and providing the wrong information. So you think that there's pain and your brain says there's pain and you feel the pain, but the pain doesn't exist. And so they can't diagnose it, they can't fix it, they can't, you know, what do you do? Um, well, it's like, you put a little chip in there and you well, shock the brain. What if? I mean, and then there's no pain. How many war amputees have that, uh, what's called phantom limb syndrome? Mm -hmm. Sure. You know, so I, I mean, there's a lot of potential good that can come from this. But I, again, I go back to my first comment, the moral implications. I think this could go real bad, real fast if it's not reined in. Right, which is why I'm mm -hmm. happy they have some, was it neuroethicists on? Yeah, that was good to see. Class. But yeah. Uh, yeah. But like anything, where where's the line and, and who, who gets to control the technology? I would That's volunteer true. for this. I would volunteer to have it done, and here is why. Because it I said <laughs> it increased performance in numbers and functions. Could you imagine if finally, after getting a chip implanted in my brain, <laughs> I would understand the things that Robbie said? I don't think it works that way, Sash. <laughs> I, I don't think so either. But it helps you to focus. <laughs> but take this to the next level. I mean, we already know all the analytics that come from cell phones and your web usage. Imagine having that integrated with the chip that reads your emotions. That's it. It reads emotions and it under, and it interprets. Yeah, because mm -hmm. it's it's an AI. I mean, if it then goes, mm, hey, I can manipulate you from a mm. marketing standpoint and invoke mm. these emotions yeah. with mm. these. I mean, like, we're, I mean, the sky's the limit with this technology. But man, could it go bad? And and you think, well, they can't control people's minds. They can't put thoughts into your head and say, you know. But they can certainly walk do, you down the road. Well, here here. Here's a suggestion: Do this, or steal right. that, or or beat up that guy. You can't. They can't do that. It's not that kind of mind control. Mm -hmm. But have you ever been, you know, on your way to work? You're feeling pretty good, and some idiot cuts you off, mm -hmm. and all of a sudden, there goes your day. Yeah. You know, or somebody, you know, something happens. Somebody mistreats you uh, when you're checking out for your coffee or something, and and it can ruin your day, and then it affects in turn your attitude and the right. way that you treat other people throughout that day. And, you know, read because the shirt, folks. It's hard. Yeah, it's hard to regulate emotion in situations like that. The facial Big recognition time. for moods would probably be great for people who suffer from something like Asperger's and where sure. they have a really hard time empathizing because yep. they don't easily read emotion on others. <laughs> so, zap so zap them. So zap them. We'll have to see how, what comes of it anyways. All right. Thinking of getting a drone for Christmas? Just a heads up, you may need to qualify to fly in the UK under a new legislation planned by the government. Drones weighing more than 250 grams could also be banned from flying near airports or above two or 400 feet in a crackdown on unsafe flying. Police will also be given new powers to seize and ground drones which have been used in criminal activity. The bill has been welcomed by the pilots' union, which has warned of near misses involving drones and aircraft, saying that there have been 81 incidents that so far this year, up from 71 in 2016 and 29 in 2015. The union's general secretary, Brian Stratton, said these proposals are a, a step towards the safe integration of drones, but until the new rules are in place, the threat of a serious collision remains. The proposed bill, to be published in the spring, would ensure that owners of drones weighing more than 250 grams would need to register and take a test. Wow. I wonder if that'll be like a written test or a flying test or just Oh, wouldn't like that a be cool? Yeah, Common it's, a, it's actually cast. a race. <laughs> <laughs> All right, exactly. fire up your drones. <laughs> oh. Flying through a course or something like that. No, I think it's, it's literally just registration and, yeah. and answering the test like a G1 or something. It's be, time. Yeah. It's like a written test, yeah. It's yeah. time for that, for sure. Yeah. 
The UK's information commissioner has huge concerns about Uber's data policies and ethics following a breach that exposed the details of 57 million customers and drivers. Uber did not tell anyone about the breach and actually paid a ransom to hackers to delete the data. Deputy Commissioner James Dipple Johnson said that these actions were unacceptable. The ride sharing company does have a resource page for those who may be affected. Deputy Commissioner James Dipple Johnson said the Information Commissioner's Office would work with the National Cybersecurity Centre to determine the scale of the breach and how it affected people in the UK, as well as considering the next steps that Uber needed to take to comply with its data protection obligations. Next year, EU countries will radically alter data protection laws to offer consumers greater control over the data that they share with companies. Mm. Wow. So Uber not only kept the breach a secret, but then paid a hacker, I guess, to... Yeah. yeah. <laughs> See... That's icky. The, uh, icky. When, it, icky. when it comes to Uber, I, I feel like they've just had about 12 months of complete butt kicking on, on a on just screwing up front on various levels right like every time they sure. they got ahead something went wrong and they my my feeling is they dealt with it not necessarily correctly and this is just another step in the case and right. it's it's too bad if if you pay a hacker to i guess I, if you pay a hacker, then how do you know? How do they have proof that the hacker deleted the data? That, that <laughs> just <laughs> or just assure you. Oh yeah, yeah. Was the yeah hacker, I deleted that data. Yeah, or was the hacker sure the one that actually leaked the story? Right now they have the no, data and the money. It was probably an ethical hacker that they knew or had reference to. Yeah. Do you think so? I, I, maybe. They paid a ransom. I d so that's not very ethical. Now we talked about. <laughs> We talked about them. No, that was DJI. I'm mixing up my stories. Yeah. It makes me think about DJI's story last yeah. week and how a hacker was using the, the bug bounty program to show that, or to, you know, submit a, a bug. Yes. And had connected. I wonder if it's a similar case to that. Oh, that's true. I never yeah. thought of that. Yeah. <laughs> so in, in this particular case, though, I mean, we got to look at the fact that this is, um, what, over a year ago that this occurred? Yeah. Mm -hmm. So um, now the question comes up, well, why are we just hearing about it now? Wh who leaked the information? I mean, not every news, news source is telling where the, the story came from. Um, but in fact, the, this, um, is it the CEO or not the CEO, but the head honcho anyways at Uber, it, it was replaced. Maybe it was the CEO. Yeah, that, wasn't, September. Yes. Yeah, that wasn't too long ago. So that could yeah. be part of it. And so he actually, um, well, first of all, fired um, the, the, folks that covered it up yes uh, but also um then released uh, a press release letting people know that hey this has happened mm -hmm. and it happened under not under my watch but under the last guy's watch yeah. and uh you know so that, that that plays into it as well yeah so he's trying to clean up i think mm -hmm. which is good mm -hmm. it's a great mm -hmm. service so i hope that they get it together and well, they're able to that's the continue. thing is i mean they do offer a good service it just it's like, man, some bad calls have been made. Mm -hmm. right. uh. Speaking of a good service, Skype call and messaging service has been removed from app stores in China, including the Apple App Store. Apple says it's one of several apps to have been removed after the government said it does not comply with local law. Skype owner Microsoft told the BBC the app had been temporarily removed and the company was working to reinstate the app as soon as possible. The app is also no longer available for download on Andrew Android app stores in China. Media reports suggest the disruption to Skype started in October. Apple said in a statement, we have been notified by the Ministry of Public Security that a number of voice over internet protocol apps do not comply with local law. Therefore, these apps have been removed from the App Store in China. Skype, when downloaded from outside China's firewall, has been seen as a semi-secure way of discussing sensitive topics away from the eyes and ears of China's state security. Skype is just the latest in a string of foreign-owned digital and internet platforms, including Alphabet's Google, Facebook, and Twitter, which are unavailable to Chinese users. 
Mm-hmm. Wow. What do they do in China if they don't have like Twitter and Facebook? Oh, and they Skype? have they, their own stuff. Yeah. That's right. Know, yeah. They, and it's government monitored and government controlled, regulated and recorded yeah. and everything yeah. else. But do you, yep. do you think that it'll ever be allowed? I guess maybe if Skype allows it to be monitored. Maybe. Yeah, that would be the thing. If Skype were to put servers in China and make them monitorable by the government, yeah. then but see the way the way things work though is when there's an app that works well somebody in china comes up with their own version of it i mean right. you right. see it all the time so mm-hmm. it's only going to be a matter of time before they have their own version of skype which will then have integration with regular skype but because they'll they'll be there back but they won't stuff. be allowed to do integration they won't be able to tap mm-hmm. into calling to skype because that's the whole thing it's about regulating although as you say if it was if it was a regulated app that was connected to Skype, then that app could be monitored. Yes. By I, the I bet you it'll okay. happen. Could. It could. Yeah. I can't see... Oh, that's such a hard thing. Uh, can you imagine being a software developer and releasing something li- like Skype? Right. Maintaining its servers, maintaining the service, making it so that I can call China for free? And oh. then having them just shut it down? <sighs> yeah. I mean, there's potentially billion-plus customers right there. Wow. I cannot imagine. Wow. China's a big country. You want to be able to market to them and sure. to have services accessible. So maybe Skype will come up with a way of making it far more accessible and then be allowed to reintegrate. Yeah. I think about all the like foreign exchange students and everything mm-hmm. and you know that's how we communicate back with uh, with you know parents and exactly. family members and stuff. So it's hmm. it certainly be tough. <laughs> tough on them well i mean there's different access. apps you can use like I, I know with some of the online games that i play you know we keep keep connected outside with an app called discord and it's got video right. chat too uh that'll be blocked if it isn't already well there's lots of users from china yeah yeah i mean you've got kakao which is also a chinese chatting app i believe they've just added video integration mm-hmm. you know so i mean there's lots of other ways around it it's okay. no different than like whatsapp or whatever so yeah I mean, there are other ways but mm-hmm. yeah for now <laughs> Big thanks to Roy W. Nash and our community of viewers for submitting stories to us this week. Thanks for watching the Category 5.TV newsroom. Don't forget to like and subscribe for all your tech news with a slight Linux bias. And for more free content, be sure to check out our website. From the Category 5.TV newsroom, I'm Sasha Rickman. Thank you, Sasha. This is Category 5 Technology TV, or shall I say, this has been Category 5 Technology TV. It's been great having you here. Um, I'm going to be here next week. I hope you can be here. Yeah, I will be be here next week. I hope that you will be here next week. Um, And, uh, you know, again, get onto our YouTube channel. It's been erupting over there uh, as of late. I stirred the pot when I said Raspberry Pi Killer. Oh, my. Yes. Apparently, that's something you're not supposed to say. No, that you, you uh, that was like a hornet's nest you kicked. Mm-hmm. Uh, so there, mm-hmm. so there's lots of opinionated people. Yes, not just not opinionated, but loyal, loving fans of the Raspberry Pi platform. <laughs> yes, and so. I get it because I have one and I love it. Oh yes, oh yes. But uh, see, uh, and you tried to comment on it many times. I think the thing that was missed is that it's not necessarily that it's a Raspberry Pi killer. But it's the no. fact that you get four times the speed at double the price. Like, just from yeah, a exactly. price point standpoint, some people could go, why would I not move over to here? And so... Right. Yeah, and I'm certainly at that point where I want something faster, more powerful yeah. for certain projects. But I still use my Pi 3 for a bunch of other stuff. I just ordered one on Monday. There you go. Yeah. There you go. Um, if you're not sure what we're on about, go to linuxtechshow.com. You'll see the video. If you click on videos, um, there's a, uh, there are a couple of videos about the Raspberry Pi as of late, uh, about the Odroid XU4Q. Uh, this is what I called the Raspberry Pi Killer. <laughs> it is an eight-core uh, single-board computer, so you know it's, it's certainly something that makers are really keen on, really excited about. Uh, but what this has done, what this whole um, you know the the eruption of comments and everything on that video uh, has done for us is we're really looking at 
introducing more SBC uh, single board computer um, features. Mm -hmm. So more hands-on demos. We've done a, a lot. Yes, We've shown we how to install Plex on it. We've shown how to do RetroPie yeah. um, and that kind of stuff. So we're going to start doing more comparisons so that you can judge for yourself what, uh, what board is right for you. So if you're interested in that, if you want to start making your own little computers and and things that you can you know connect to your TV and surf the web on a uh, 35 to 60 dollar little single board computer it's pretty cool stuff it's a lot of fun uh, you'll want to tune in subscribe on our YouTube channel and and see what we're going to be up to over the next little while so, well, that's all the time that we have for this all week right thanks you too and thanks to you hope that you have a great week see ya, see ya. Bye.